TitleMatchNetwork.com. What were your initial impressions of Vince? Well, I had known Vince in 78 when I first met him when, when I was in there in the earlier years, and he was announcing. So, I mean, I, I liked him. He was a personal guy, right. the, the announcing. You know, he was always nice to me, and uh, you know, I had no problem with him, you know, at all, really. And uh, I didn't have a whole lot of contact with him, but, I, you know, as far as I knew him, you know, he was nice. Right. You know, he, he was good, you know, just he was good at what he did, right. doing the announcing. But now he was in control of the whole ship there in, you know, in the WWF. And, and uh, I went in his office, and uh, I guess they, they had come up with the name Baron Beefcake. Hmm. And I think his wife has actually thought of the the name. And their, their impressions of Baron Beefcake was uh, a guy in a top hat and a tuxedo top and a, you know, and a cane thing, you know, right. or something like that. And, uh, and, Actually, it was Hulk and I and, uh, and Vince. I mean, we sat down and brainstormed for several hours and went back and forth. And I think it was Hulkster that said, you know, what about Brutus Beefcake, you know, from Popeye and Brutus, you know. Right. That, you know, and uh, at the time I had blonde hair and a blonde beard. And and, uh, and uh, they, they, I, they, we kicked it around for a while and it seemed like, that that's what we settled on and at the time i was horrified because i had no grasp of what a brutus beef cake was it just sounded like the f stupidest name <laughs> you could possibly think up and I, I actually at the time i thought that it was a, gonna just a joke it was gonna make me a laughing stock that i was gonna be you know laughed at right. you know that you know that it was gonna be I just it was instead of being my big break, it was just going to be I was going to be ridiculous and be the like the class clown of the of the territory or something. Mm -hmm. So, Hulkster and I took off and went back to Florida, and I went to uh, and he took me to see a guy that made clothes in Florida and actually made clothes for a lot of the rock and roll musicians, made clothes for Cher, made clothes for Jimi Hendrix. The guy had a lot of really innovative ideas and, and made made clothes for Hulk's rock and roll band, uh, Ruckus, and, and in some of his earlier years, too, some of his other ones. And we sat down and said, now, all right, here's the name, Brutus Beefcake. What can we do? To, some, we need something here that's just really going to grab the people. Right. And, and it's really going to be something they've never seen before. And that's when we came out with, uh, came up with doing the spandex tights and, and all these crazy animal prints and wild colors at first with it well I had the gold of may and hey with a, with a right. bow tie with rhinestones on it made these arm bands you know with some with stones on them just all different colors matching the outfits and stuff and I, when i came out i was strutting around the ring and stuff i mean the people were flipping out because nobody ever worn this hardly this type of clothes you know, mostly it was just guys wearing tight some guys had the robe you had the rick flares or a couple guys that had wore the big robes right Maybe the Greg Valentines and you know had the big robes, but and the gorgeous George, but that was you know basically everybody just wore wrestling boots and a pair of tights, and that was it. Well, I came out wearing these snakeskin pants right. and snakeskin things and this tie and gold lame and all this stuff, and, and the people loved it. That's when know. you would first come out and just run around ringside. Yeah, right? just right. going around the ring, and they had you know walking around the ring, and then you know, they had all the managers vying over right. me and see who was going to get the deal, and then. God only knows why they picked Johnny Valiant. Oh, that's my next question. How did you get paired with Johnny V? They just, uh, Vince liked Johnny V. Like the Valiant brothers were actually, you know, were big in New York. Right. And uh, they were actually the tag champions in New York for many years. And, and, and Vince liked Johnny V and wanted to give him a, a chance, wanted to give him a break there or something. So that's what they that's what they did. And, and the beefcake thing was, was off and running. And it was, it was getting over big time. It really got over well. Was Vince changing as time as as uh, the the WWF got more powerful? Or well, yeah, he was growing. Right, he was growing know, a little right. more his power, and and things were you know going his way. No, no doubt about it. But things were still you know it was still everybody was pretty happy with the way things were going. Right, territory was doing great. Merchandise, everything was flying. People were making money. Scheduling was crazy was tough. You know, we were working maybe getting two days off a month. So you didn't see your family. So in that respect, some of the guys were getting 
run down. You know, there right. was tend to be a few more injuries and, and stuff because guys were getting tired and, and they were pushing it week after week after week. But uh, but still, everything was was still rolling along well, and we we're still building momentum. Wow, well, there was we things were cooking back then, man. We were wrestling two a days on the weekends. We'd go and wrestle Saturday show in the afternoon, a Saturday night show, flop, hop in a Learjet Saturday night, fly somewhere else, bang, work a Sunday afternoon right. show, boom, jump in a Learjet again, fly somewhere and work a Sunday night show. I mean, everything sold out. I mean, three, four, five hundred thousand dollar houses, every show, just boom, boom, boom. And you know, we were rolling, making money. And it was it was just a great great time. Everybody was just happy, right. uh, you know. Just you know, things were just rolling. You know, people were making money. Even the underneath guys in their first matches were making thousands of dollars, you know, a week. And it, you know, it was just it was just a super time. Was the travel schedule hard? On it you? was impossible. We wrestled seven days, and then we had our TV shoots and all right. that. I mean, you were wrestling. At times, I wrestled. 12, 14 times just in a week because of the two a days right, two and then the TV tapings, you'd have three or four TV tapings. And if you were a, a main event guy or one of the top times. guys, a top baby face, and I was at the time, then I was in one of the, uh, you know, being groomed for one of the top slots for the Intercontinental Belts. Title match